Colin Cowherd showed some love to the Sooners? What? Yep, I got a guest with me. We're going to talk about that. Coming up in about 10 seconds. Welcome to Unfair Sports. I am your host, Jay. Thank you all for tuning here on the channel. Please, while you're here, hit that like and subscribe button and show some love that tells YouTube that I'm doing something right. And by subscribing, you get way more of this content. I've got a special guest with me today on this video, my main man, Ty Hayes with Around the Table Sports. Ty, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Jay. Always a ton of fun getting to talk to you. Y'all can find me at Around the Table Sports on YouTube constant college football content whether that's game analysis kind of talking about film or recruiting i'm talking about college football all the time love to have you all over there it's always a good time and you can see jay quite frequently over there as well so it's it's a lot of fun yeah we have a blast over there and we definitely talk a bunch of college football so we've got some topics to jump into and we'll dive in so I am interested, Ty, if you have listened to Colin Cowherd rain some praise on Oklahoma. Did you see that? I did. I did. And look, one thing I think everybody needs to understand about Colin Cowherd is he's a professional, right? Like he didn't get to where he is. He doesn't pull the ratings he pulls for no reason. The man understands the media game. Whenever he was going at Oklahoma, he was doing so in favor of local USC, which at some level makes sense. Now, I always thought that he levied the kind of criticism way too harshly, and I never really mm -hmm. understood where it was coming from. But I've been in that camp, right, of not thinking Oklahoma was going to just fall by the wayside. So that's neither here nor there. But he knows what he's doing. First and foremost, he knows that by acknowledging this, it's going to get a tremendous amount of clicks because it's contrary to an opinion he's had. Right. Secondly, he knows that he really can't have any other opinion. Look, whether you want to put Oklahoma, because he said in the video that he thinks they look the second best team in the country behind Georgia. Let, before you start, I'm going to play the video for the yeah, viewers. I want you all to watch this and just listen to Colin. I'm going to have to give him some love here because I think that with the bad that he gives us and everyone bashes him for him, when he gives good, you probably should go ahead and say, hey, acknowledge that he does do it semi-fairly he recognizes his the faults and his errors but here's colin cowherd the glass half full with oklahoma football <laughs> yeah, I, so oh i've, so I've said that everybody in oklahoma just threw up in their cheerios george is the best team i've seen agreed oh, i test my agreed. dad was an optometrist i test i don't know what that has to do with it but sure yeah. you vroom vroom let's go x-ray eyes got it oklahoma is the second best football team i've seen that's and I interesting. Think they're, I That's think interesting because I, I love what I saw last week. I they are they got power, they got speed, they're better on defense. There is a little edge to Brett Venables that maybe Lincoln, you know, he's a defensive guy. Yeah. I telling you, I test. Hey, the, by the way, so let me let me just dive into that because the the we'll we'll, we'll let Joe Clatt kind of explain it. You can go to the Hurts channel and find the video, or you can go to my Twitter account. Um, go to Add Unfair Sports. I actually posted that video there to talk about it. So, Ty, back to back to the point that you were kind of saying it. It's he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he yeah. knows where the clicks are going to come from. He knows how to rile up groups. You can tell when a lot of stuff he puts out there is specifically to work up certain people. I mean, but that's the media game. You got to get fans engaged, and sometimes you have to listen to the full context of the conversation and. But, but the thing is, everyone in Oklahoma feels like Colin Cowherd has a vendetta against just Oklahoma in general, not just the Sooners, but also the Thunder. And it feels like it has all the roots of him being from Seattle. And it's just he likes to hammer and hammer and hammer in well, from the, uh, the Washington State area outside of Seattle. He just hates Oklahoma. He just likes to hate on Oklahoma as a fly over state so back to your point on <laughs> the way that he runs the game with his point on oklahoma being the second best team do you do you see any accuracy with that well look what i was gonna say is whenever he gives that point he knows what he's doing right he, he gave the point criticizing oklahoma now he gives praise but not only does he know that that's going to generate clicks but he also realizes that at some level he has to come off of the criticism he levied against the Oklahoma Sooners to maintain some level of legitimacy right Fair point 
and I, I completely agree with him in this aspect. I don't care whether you rank Oklahoma number two, because I, I think the majority of college football fans would agree up to this point. Georgia's looked like the best team in the country, right? Like Period. they are firing on all cylinders and it's been since the snap. It wasn't halfway into the first game against Oregon. It was when they said hut on first down with 15 minutes on the clock that they've been dominant, right? I mean, they look good, very good. Um, so Georgia, but whoever you put at number two, whether that's Oklahoma, whether that's Ohio State, Alabama, I don't think there's any argument at all, though, that Oklahoma is easily one of the top five teams in the country right now. We talked about this on the live stream on Monday. Clemson comes in at number five right now, right? My question is, is what has Clemson done in 2022 that would justify me putting them ahead of the Oklahoma Sooners? Clemson, the brand, has done tremendous things the past five to ten years. There's no question about that. Clemson, the... Football team in 2022, I don't think has been better than Oklahoma. I don't think that you can point to me a game where you could say they look like a better team than Oklahoma. Michigan's look good. Alabama's had two good games, one bad outing. So however you want to rank them, I'm not really pressed about that. I completely agree with him, though. It, it, it is no question that the Oklahoma Sooners right now look like one of the best teams in the country. They're, I don't think that's a conversation to be had right now. No, and I totally agree with you there. And we talked about this before. We both have a, a mild disdain for rankings this early in the season. Definitely have a preference of seeing this. I'm I'm more of a week week five, week six person. Some people think week four is fair, and I think week four would be fair if there was the, the soonest you can put together with. I want a month's worth of football to know because a lot of these rankings are based upon old clout that schools have just from their past um, uh, accomplishments and. In some cases, it's fair. I do agree that Alabama should be ranked really high on a regular basis. Same thing with Ohio State. Georgia seems to be trending in that direction. Clemson has their moments, and Oklahoma is one of those as well. But it's so much better if we didn't have any type of rankings and teams just battled it out. And then when week four came, you're, you're like, okay, these are who are played. These is the, the results. This is the way these teams look. I think this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, these are all ranked because what that does to me, it takes away a lot of bias when you get to the actual college football playoff rankings because they can't use those week one, two, three, and four ratings of, let's say Alabama plays uh, Houston, who's ranked 24th in the nation, and they beat the brakes off of them. That is sometimes used as an excuse. If Bama dropped two games, they'll say, well, they beat up on Houston the first week of the season. And it's like, what? Alabama beat everybody else. Let's focus on those games, not this one. Same thing with teams that shouldn't be there, like Notre Dame. They get so much credit for all these ranked wins when they're ranked wins against teams that are like one in five by the time the true rankings come out. That stuff should not exist. Now, I only said Bama, you're a Bama fan, and so I only mention them because no it makes sense in the conversation, but we know that they're supposed to be ranked high. That period. They're, they're going to be ranked top three every year because they, they, that's the way the statement does it. it. Yeah, they've right. earned it. They, they've earned it. They've earned it for over 10 years. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're one, them, them Ohio State, and I feel like probably you would say Georgia, they're probably the ones, Clemson, maybe Oklahoma, probably the five schools that deserves a little bit of – historical clout mainly because they're always consistently up there but at the same time almost any generation in history of college football right like yeah. any almost any 10-year period right you can go 10 years those teams we just listed are having a good to great season at any That's point true. in the 10-year period now oklahoma is a little bit special in that for the consistency of winning they've put together right maybe they might right. not have the most national championships but as far as consistent winning They've been incredibly unique in that. But to your point, th those institutions, they, they get the benefit of the doubt now. But even when we look at it, like you look at Ohio State, whether you think they're the third best team, the fourth best team, or the fifth best team, we're all sitting there thinking, yeah, but at the end of the year, they're going to be right there. Right. right. Like they're going to be right there. And so we kind of have an inclination. Yeah, exactly. And so it's funny later in the video with Colin, of course, he talks about Lincoln and he makes mention that these are Lincoln's players and Joe Klatt stops and says, ah, 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 ah. all the key players that Lincoln Riley brought in, they left. And they had to bring a whole bunch of transfers in to replace it. And they're playing great. And so 
with that notion that Colin pointed out, Oklahoma, to in his eyes, same thing with Joel, and a few others have said this, um, that they think Oklahoma's probably, is, is up there in the top five, second best team in the country playing football right now. Do you feel like that's a crazy assessment, though? I mean, initially you kind of said that they are very much playing impressive to you, but do you think it's crazy to even mention them as the number two team in the country? Uh, I don't think it's crazy, no, because look, whenever we look at this, Ohio State, I think, is a team that's played very well, but they've had some closer calls than Oklahoma has. I think Alabama is probably a team that a lot of people will say, okay, well, what about Alabama at number two? I think that Alabama is probably the second best team in the country. But mm -hmm. if the question is, okay, well, through three games, how have they played? Look, I'm an Alabama fan, and I've been very transparent. They did not play well against Texas. Uh, now, granted, part of that is good Texas. A lot of that was bad Alabama. You don't have 15 penalties in a game and think that you played a good football game, right? Like, so – in that aspect, right, Bama didn't play well week two. Um, so if you're saying which team has played the best three weeks of football, I don't think it's an asinine assumption to say Oklahoma has played the second best football. And like I said, right now, if if you were asking me, Ty, you have got to do a rankings based on the AP poll right now. Mm -hmm. Where would you change it? Look, I'm going to be honest. I think Michigan right now looks really good. They're intriguing to me. I'd put them at four. Ohio State, I think, is three. Bama at two, Georgia at one. I think Oklahoma is better than Clemson. I have seen nothing Clemson has done this year that would put, that would give me reason to believe that Oklahoma isn't a better team or at least a more consistent team right now. And for people sitting there wondering, okay, well, what has this team showed you or this team? One, Georgia, I don't think we need to talk a whole lot about, right? I mean, I think that <laughs> at all. for two, for Alabama though, guys, Bama has the first or second best defense in the nation right now. I mean, we, yep. we do need to understand that defense for Alabama right now. Don't pay attention to, oh, well, Will hasn't gotten the sacks. Offenses are getting the ball out in two seconds so that he can't get the sack. That defense is playing unbelievably high-level football right now. Ohio State, the offense, is playing high-level football. Michigan, they're playing high-level football. Oklahoma, the whole team is playing high-level football. So, no, uh, Jay, uh, sorry to get long-winded, to simply answer your question, no, it's not a crazy assumption at all. Yeah, and looking at that, I mean, both Oklahoma and Alabama are both allowing <laughs> 10 points or less this season. And so that means that they're doing what they're supposed to do against the competition. They're barely giving up points. Uh, that Nebraska last touchdown in the second half, that was against, of course, second stringers. And like we mentioned, the, I think Oklahoma could have went in there only giving actually they could they could have only given up a touchdown that first drive if oh, they truly uh, yeah, wanted yeah. to but they made the choice not to it doesn't make sense to open the playbook that high or play starters that late sometimes well, I like eh. right exactly because you got bigger games you got conference games coming up and this kansas state game is going to be a big one so ty thank you on that we'll take colin's love right now he's probably preparing himself to be able to talk a whole bunch of noise about oklahoma in the future we get it. That's what he likes to do. But I will say this to in, in my parting shot. He has always had a love for Brent Venables. And I know that he he had voiced his displeasure that Oklahoma let him leave and go to Clemson. And he's praised him at Clemson. So this is not that shocking. It's just, I guess, him thinking that Venables coming in as a head coach and saying it's going to take time for him to do it. It's truly a fair assessment. While at the same time, Venables proved that, nah, we're here today. Yeah, <laughs> the it, talent's it, been here. We're here. And I'm glad you said that, Jay, because that is a fair assessment. And I know it's an unpopular one because people right. will say, oh, but all he's ever do is win. And, and I told Chris this, right? Because Chris is our, uh, our attorney friend. And I said, Chris, <laughs> you could be an incredible attorney. You're just an unbelievable litigator. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be a great head of the law firm because it's two different things that you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. One of them, you're singularly focused on litigation. The other one, you're focused on the day to day. So it is if you're simply saying from a curiosity standpoint, not to down a coach, but from a curiosity, I wonder what it will look like. That's fair. Now, that being said, three games in, you also have to come out and say, hey, so far, it looks pretty darn good. <laughs> it looks, I mean, everything looks pretty darn good. So that, that's the reality of the situation. Yep, looks like he's walked in and he's uh, made this a home and um, yeah. we're happy to have him. Seamless. Seamless.